Highlights podcast on OzPod Syndicate. So when I was young, probably in primary school, I'm struggling reading, reading books. And my mom always nagged me, just read because it's going to be a great story for you. It's going to be open doors to, ev- to everyone who loves reading books. And I agree with my mom. Because of that, I'm loving reading my book, even I'm struggle. It's opened doors to different places that I've never been before, but just reading the book. And also, aside from that, who know who who loves dogs as well? Every kid loves dog. I got I got dogs in my house right now. It's a staffy. Well, every kid loves dogs as well, and every kid's also struggling in reading. So for for today episode, we're very lucky. Our guest for today is Natalie. She is the coordinator of Story Dogs in South Australia, and we're gonna discuss about this Story Dogs, this nonprofit organization, how it started. So please welcome Natalie. How are you? Good morning. Hi. Yeah, good morning. I'm very pleased to how, be here. Thank how's you. How's your day today? My day's started off very well. Thank you. Thank you to for guests for our podcast You're today. Welcome. So before we go ahead, tell us about yourself. How you become part of this or good organization? Right. I have a my daughter um, lives in Western Australia, mm-hmm. and about three years ago, she had seen uh, a video on mm-hmm. Story Dogs in Perth. They have a large um, group of teams in in Western Australia, and she contacted me. She said, "Mum, I think this would be a really great thing for you." And we had at the, have at the time my Labrador Secret. She said, "I think this would be really good for you and Secret to be involved with." So I had a look at the video and straight away I contacted Janine Sigley, who was one of the co-founders of Story Dogs and who's, she's um, in New South Wales. And I said to who I was and I was very excited to see the program and so they'd sent me all the forms. I was very impressed with their website and all the information that they had given. And I looked at all the information to become a volunteer and I remember and then I contacted Janine and I said to Janine, I would like to become the coordinator of Adelaide and I think she nearly fell off a of bird chair because <laughs> not many people really offered to do those roles. I was very impressed with the organisation. So that was three years ago. So I actually we have a we actually have a team in in Wyala and in Mount Gambier as well. So I'm the Adelaide coordinator. So I did my training over in Western Australia, went over there and stayed with my daughter and her family. We had the dog assessments done here in Adelaide. I have a lovely uh, lady um, called Sophie who's a fantastic dog trainer and she's my dog assessor. So Janine came over and did my training as a coordinator and a volunteer and my dogs were assessed. So I have the two dogs. I have Secret, my Labrador. She started out when she was 10, and I have a Brussels Griffin, Miss Fergie. So Miss Fergie started when she was about um, seven. So they were the, they are the two dogs that we started here in Adelaide. So that's how I started my journey. I was formerly a veterinary nurse for about 23 years. So love dogs and love children and have worked a lot um, with children. And, and currently I'm a, a pastoral care worker at a school. So I think it's the best thing that I could be doing is with dogs and children. It doesn't get better than that. Mm. How is the literacy program in South Australia? How's the kids? The children's. We, with Story Dogs, it's a one-on-one reading program. The children are actually selected by the teachers. So there may be children that who are reluctant readers who may not want to read in front of an adult, but the presence of a dog gives them confidence. Some children may be quite good readers, but not they don't feel that they're very confident at their reading. Some children may just not 
feel comfortable. They're not, they don't have a lot of self-confidence. So having the presence of a dog and the children are very much aware that we're there with our dogs, but we relay everything through the dogs. So an example would be that if we're reading a book and I might say, well, Secret doesn't quite understand what this word means. Would you be able to help Secret with that word? Or would you be able to help Secret what's happening on this page? Or, or I would say something like, Miss Fergie, this is a brand new book. Miss Fergie hasn't heard this book before. So would you like to be able to read to them? So that's how the program, we were a one-on-one program. So the children can build up their confidence with reading. And, and I, as a coordinator and as a volunteer with the program, I can see the difference that it's making with some of these children who now be, who were first a little bit reluctant and weren't quite sure and then are very happy to come each week to read. So how is the story dog started? How did this program start? Yeah, the program started. In 2009, um, Janine Sigley and Leah Sheldon were both had their children going to, the, I think it was the Marumbala East uh, Public School in New South Wales. And they'd heard about a, bro- a program called the Read Program in Utah, which was a reading education assistance dog reading program in Utah. And they'd heard about this program and thought, hmm, this might be quite a good thing because they could, they could obviously see that there were some children that weren't very confident readers so they had approached the staff and the principal at the school and at first, uh, I think their first reaction from the principal was, oh yeah, we'll give it a year. We'll see how it goes. Once they'd started the program, he could see the difference that the children, that it was making for these children, how eager they were to read. They could see the difference in, in the levels of the children's reading. So that was how the program started. So last year, we celebrated our 10th anniversary with story dogs we currently have over two and a half thousand children on the program that will probably be reading to a dog in the week we have around 500 dog teams we are australia wide apart from the territory we don't have anything in the northern territory and we have currently about 310 schools that are a part mm-hmm. of the program. We would love it to be Australia-wide. Mm-hmm. That is the aim of, of Story Dogs. We're a non-for-profit. Um, I'm a volunteer with the program as the coordinator and the volunteer with the program as well. And I was just so impressed with how they run and how they treat us as volunteers and coordinators. So what is the main mission of the Story Dogs? The main mission of Story Dogs is for children to become confident lifelong readers. Reading is the essence of of everything really, isn't it? And we're so much of today of a lot of um, computers and technology to be able to hold a book and to read a book and to share those journeys in the book and a, not a better way than to share it with a dog that um, gives you some confidence and shows you unconditional love is the best way to be able to do reading. What do you think the... Because, as you said, it's everything now is digital right mm. now. What, what what do you think is the... Is there any obstacle of the story dogs to... Because some kids now is always on the iPad, always mm. on... Um, instead of reading books, is that a big obstacle with story dogs? I don't see that as an obstacle with story dogs. You have a dog involved, children want to be able to go and see the dogs. And I have to say, when I when I go to the school, it's always, hello, secret, hello, Miss Fergie. We're always second. And that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. The dogs are the essence of to why, is to why the children want to be able to read. So they know that we're there but they can read to the dog, they can sit with the dogs, they can relate to the dogs. The dogs love being around the children and show their love to them. I don't think my personal view is that these programs will stop because of that. I think because of the digital, we can still have that, but I think to hold a book and to look at a book, 
we get to know the children that you read with as well. So I get to know what books the children like to read and what, you know, what levels that they're easy. You don't want children struggling. Mm -hmm. There's no, there's no good in, it's no good in getting a book that's really hard for a child that is struggling. So you want to be able to get a book. There are, there are times when we've started a book and I'll we'll say to them, oh, I don't know whether we really like this book. What do you think, Secret? Or what do you think, Miss Fergie? And then we can change the books for the children if they don't seem to be enjoying that. But you, you try and find the books that the, that the children love to read and are interested in what their focus is on. How is, important, how is, how is, how is important the reading? How is important? Sorry, what was the question? Sorry. How, how is important the reading to like for the children? The reading, yeah, it's, it's important for children to be able to understand reading. As you, saw, we need to be able to read and to understand and to get a knowledge of words. Mm -hmm. Initially, when we're reading with the children, punctuation, all that, it doesn't matter. We don't do a lot of corrections. Then you want to be able to get the children just to understand reading and to enjoy it. If we were pushing at the children, trying to correct all mm -hmm. the time, they would get quite uncomfortable with that and would feel a little embarrassed. So that all comes in time. It's a matter of the children enjoying the book, looking at a book, enjoying a story, having an adventure, reading with the dogs. Some kids is very fear fearful on, on reading. Yes. So is the story dogs... Helps that. Helps that. Yeah. And and the teachers pick out the children. And I, in my time, we don't often get to see or hear from the parents. I've been fortunate in some times where I've run into the parents at the schools. I often try and go to assemblies with the dogs and, and meet the school community. And I've been very fortunate to meet the parents and they'll say to me, Oh, Natalie, it is just so wonderful how Story Dogs, how my child is going with Story Dogs. There was a little boy I used to um, read with. His English was his second language. And the first books we started out, he was very limited in his reading. By the end, when he finished the program, his reading was astounding and his mum would approach me and say just how much he had improved with his reading and his confidence had soared because of that so that's how that works is building up children's confidence trust also in me as bringing the dogs along trust in me as the person that is there and and some of the best times with the children is when we walk to and back from the classrooms and ask the children how their week's been and what they've been doing so you get to know these children and you you get to know how they are and their response to the dogs that they're reading to. Is there any good stories? What's the reaction of the parents or the school that you're doing the program? The schools love them. We we have the schools um, each year their only um, responsibility because we don't charge okay. going into the school. We are volunteers. So their responsibility is to have a, a story dogs, annual story dogs day. That's usually the first Friday in May. So the schools can have a fundraiser, whatever. We might have an orange day or, you know, come dressed in your pyjamas or give a gold coin donation or have your favourite dog picture. The school's responses have been amazing, just wonderful. The teachers that I get to meet and to talk to, I have a lot of schools that want to take the program on, but I just don't have a lot of the volunteers trained at the moment. So I have a lot of people or schools that say would really love... We've heard about your program, we've we've looked at your Facebook page, we've seen some videos and we'd really love to have a story dog at your school. So I take their information, they'll fill in forms that I have them on my records. So I'd love more teams. I currently have uh, a team that I'm starting off in our Drossen Area School. I have um, a team at Prospect North Primary and I'm, I'm hoping to be training a couple of people in, in next term to branch out here in Adelaide. So how many team are you right now in, in, in I SA? Have, there's me with Secret and, and Miss Fergie. I have um, Cindy and Archie at Prospect North Primary School. At uh, Drossen Area School, um, I have um, 
Clive and Julie um, with their dogs, with their two Labradors. And we have teams in Wyala and Mount Gambia. We have got a co- coordinator Wyala and Mount Gambia. They have a few teams there as well. Mm. But in Adelaide, there is, is me and um, Cindy and Archie, and we're starting off in the Ardrossan Area School, and Julie will become the coordinator in Ardrossan, and we're hoping that she'll be able to branch out mm. in that area. So to our listener and also audience, mm-hmm. if they're interested to be part of the Story, dog, story Dogs, mm-hmm. how what what are the requirements? What were the requirements? Yeah. I got dog, but I have Staffy, oh, but, I know. but it's very <laughs> it's very clever. So it doesn't sit. <laughs> he love kids, but mm-hmm. yes, we have. So you would go to the site, the website, our Story Dogs um, website, and there is um, forms in there to fill in as a as a volunteer and your dog. So the dogs are assessed. So not we all may have lovely dogs and we all love our dogs but not all dogs may be suitable be beyond the three dogs team so we have qualified dog assessors that will come and assess the dogs because we're working with children so we need dogs that are very suitable for working with children so they have a dog assessor as a volunteer we have to have all of the correct forms you know child safe forms and all of that before we can go into a school as well and the commitment so it's once a week commitment to do this with the story dogs program so you need to be able to be willing to do that as well and pick a school most most people probably have a school that they may be associated with that want the program Mm. otherwise i've had schools that have contacted me and say we really love a story dog (laughs) but i contact them and go we'd really love you to have a team as well but i just need some assess you know dog team so we the qualifications we're very strict with that but very successful because we are working in the schools, we're working with the public, and we're working with children. Mm. So just go to the website, and then yeah, there's www.storydogs.org to go okay. to there. Um, we have Facebook page as well. It's very con- um, it's very comprehensive. You'll see under there, there's with you know volunteering, schools information. They have all the packs that are available there. Fill in the forms um, for being the coordinator in Adelaide. You would contact. Me as the Story Dogs coordinator and the information is on. If you go down to South Australia and you have a look at the teams there, you'll see my name here as part of Adelaide and contact me via an email and fill in your information and then we'll go from there. I usually like to ring people as well personally and contact them and keep in touch that way. Mm. What is the future now of Story Dogs? So as you say, it's almost 10 years now. Mm. Any F- future is bigger flag, and better. Yeah? yeah, bigger and better. I mean... Last year we got to like the 2,000 children, we're over 2,500 children now, so it's growing. And I I put that down to the organisations, the way they run, um, how well they run, the care that they give to us as coordinators and volunteers as well. They're very professional ways. We can see nothing but growing for the Story Dogs program and I said, we'd love it if every school in Australia would be able to have a story dogs team. Is you know, a couple of months ago, there's a bushfire. Mm-hmm. Is the program affected because of that, or you no. have other program to help these kids that affected <sighs> area? Um, Bruce, who is the coordinator from Wyala, he saw that need. So he's been living, he's been visiting a local school um, at Lobethal. I The name escapes me at the moment with um, his dog, his Labrador, as not as a story dog, but just to see the children. So he spoke to Janine about it and she said, Bruce, I think that's a fantastic idea. So he's been visiting a school just to be bringing him in and uh, meeting the children and helping them to feel relaxed so we have taken that on board and i i'm in the i'm in the a local school around here so it hasn't had that effect the bushfire effect so much on the children here but there was bruce the coordinator who thought i see a need for there and has been visiting these school for the last couple of weeks which mm. has been a really positive a really really positive thing to do 
I'm not sure in the New South Wales or whatever where that's been happening, but I certainly know here in South Australia, we Bruce saw the need and has branched out to do that. So you're looking at on South Australia to get more volunteer and get more school yes. to do the the program. That would be excellent. That's yes. your that's the aim to be able to do that to branch out to get a coordinator down south as well. I you know I live in the northern suburbs, so we're wanting people to be able to you know maybe down south and east so they can be a coordinator and then they can develop their own teams around them as well. So that would be the aim here within Adelaide to be able to do that because a lot of, you know, you've got to organise things, you've got to be able to run around and meeting people and support your volunteers. You want to be able to do that in the right way. How about um, children doesn't, which is not able to go to school because of some financial sec- Mm-hmm. Circumstances. So, yeah, we are. We programs run within within schools, so that's the idea of the programs is the going into school and to one on one reading. Mm-hmm. We, you know, I do um, presentations at different times with a one on group that I might, you know, meet with a group. But we st- still, you know, and I might read to the children there. But we are a one on one reading program, so not as groups or as whatever. Group, yeah, okay. I how it's what. So, so say, I want to be, the school want to be part of the program. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So how how does it, that work? Does yeah. work? Yeah, I if would in and in the circumstances you would obviously contact the school. I I work at a school, so there was one school that I work at. The other school that I did some mentoring with and chose that school as my other school to do reading with, where Secret goes to. So then you school you speak to the school principals. We have school orientation packs. So then um, you would show them that we come down and meet with the school principal. We go through these orientation packs to make sure that everybody's on board is to know how the program runs. The teachers also get a pack that the child that they would select. I know at my school, every child has their name written down on a consent form just in case <laughs> they get picked for the program. And there are times if we, we're doing one-on-one or a child might be away... And we've got some time, I can go to the classroom and say, would you be able to pick somebody you'd just like to be able to read as a one-off today? Because more than that, we need to get permission from parents for them to be able to do that. Mm, that's a fantastic program. Mm. So any, because we have have no time right now, mm-hmm. so any message to our audience and listener about the Story Dogs? I can see as a coordinator the huge benefits that the program has brought to the children. I see the joy being with the dogs that brings to the children as well and how they relate so well to that. I had um, an incident recently when um, I had um, my Labrador secret was down at our vet clinic and a lady came in and she said, hello, Natalie. No, she said, hello, secret. And I said, oh, do I know you? <laughs> she said, yes. She said, you um, you come and read to my child at, at the school. And she said, I am so grateful for this program and how it's helped him to uh, enjoy reading and how he's become a much more confident reader. I don't get to hear a lot from the parents. So what I can say is what the feedback that I'm getting and the people that I meet – have nothing but praise for the program and are so grateful that their child can be a part of it. We would love to, all children to be a part of it, but unfortunately we can't do it. We need more volunteers. <laughs> yes, more volunteers yeah. to be able to yeah. do that, to come in and read to the ch- or listen to the children read. That's good. Thank you so much. You are more than welcome. Thank you for coming to the show for the podcast and thank you for the story dogs as well that have the time for, for us to to tell the story of the story dogs and and yeah if you want to volunteer if you have a dog just let Natalie know and she's happy to help you as well Thank you. enjoyed this episode be sure to subscribe so you're notified when a new episode is posted in Apple Podcast Google Podcast Spotify Stitcher or via RSS 
While you're at it, if you found value in this show, rate and review this podcast and share it with your friends. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. It's Adelaide's podcast on OzPod Syndicate.